Don't worry, you have plenty of shots. Don't worry. There's heaps, there's heaps in this tank, about five liters. I think I've got like four liters left. <laughs> It's crazy. It's been deep fried. <laughs> what would happen to your hand if you touched it? Oh, nothing? Okay, you can't actually dip it in and leave it there for like five seconds. Okay. You will lose your, the tip of, I will lose the tip of my finger if I did that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the reason why I can do that less than a second, yeah. um, there's this effect called the Leidenfrost effect. Mm -hmm. Basically what happens is if the temperature of the object is very, very high compared to the boiling point of the liquid, um, flash boiling occurs. So as soon as I dip my finger in, instantly there's a layer of nitrogen gas around yeah. the finger. So no liquid actually touches my finger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Unless I leave it in for long enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyway, see the boiling has sort of stopped, and now it's just yeah. sizzling. Yeah. So you're going to be using chopsticks as your tweezers? Yes. I can't use metallic <laughs> ones because this will snap. And also the plastic tweezers I've got too short. Okay. I like these ones. I like these ones. <laughs> I prefer Asian tradition. Exactly. Do you know how to use these? No. no? <laughs> so, it's uh, super conducting right now mm -hmm. because it, the, the rapid boiling has finished, which means you can tell the temperature of that thing is sort of around the same as the liquid nitrogen, which is 77 degrees. Yeah? Yeah. See? It just jumps off. But, if I... Oh, this is stuck. Oh, it's stuck because I put some water in there from uh, when I was playing around with it. Right, there we go. If I take it out and I let it um, cool to below TC, it's still super conducting, right? so it rejects magnetic fields. See? So that's normal. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's no longer so super conducting. Right? So it's because it's out of the exactly. It's now greater than ninety Kelvin. Okay. So, why don't you leave the two on top of each other and then show them the, the rejection itself? Yes, exactly. Actually, it, it won't push it out. The other thing with superconductors is um, when you, the moment it crosses t TC, it sort of memorizes the state of magnetic field through it and it locks that state. So, right now, the magnet is sort of far away from it, so it's pretty much got no magnetic field flowing through it. So, it crossed TC with no field going through it. So it's going to push away all fields you introduce at this point. Does that make sense? And this is the Meissner effect. You know, it doesn't let any field lines go through it. So it sort of pushes away all magnets. Why isn't it locking? It'll lock if I cross TC while it already has field penetrating it. So that's what I'm going to do now. Did you guys understand that so far? Yeah. Yeah? No? <laughs> no, no, no. What I just said was basically it memorizes how, you know, the, the state of field going through it when it crosses TC. So if it had no field going through it, when you make it cross TC, it'll memorize that state. So it's like, no, I don't let any magnetic field go through me. So then when you try to push a magnet through it now, it'll push things away. But let's make it cross TC with a magnetic field through it. See, right now it doesn't let any field through it. See that? You want to push things away? Oh, there's a piece of metal underneath the table. Oh, see, it's now warmed up. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that in there. Then I'm going to hold this near the magnet and then dip it in and then make it um, make it cool down past TC. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to lock the flux lines in it when it passes TC. Does that make sense? It remembers the state of the magnetic field flowing through it. Mm -hmm. So if it had lines going through it when it crossed TC, it's going to keep those lines and then grab those lines. Yeah? From boiling to finish. Okay, superconducting now. See that? Oh. So now, see it, it's actually stuck, it's actually stuck together. If I try to pull it apart, I can, but I have to put force in. Does that make sense? It's too oh. close together. That was too close together. I'm going to try again. So now it's not superconducting. And then it um, attracts itself to it while it's um, going to that It state. doesn't actually attract, it locks. So oh. it, it's sort of like drag and drop, it'll kick that position in the air, so I'll show you. Okay, super conducting now. See that? See that? No, what? Come around, have a look. It's rotating. Yeah, because it's floating. 
So if, yeah. I, if I give it a spin, and also, also if I grab the magnet and pull that, and I try to feel it, <laughs> given enough force, it will you know come apart. But it remembers that it's got flux lines to through it. That's so as really long cool. as I keep it um, superconducting, I just need to reintroduce this. It remembers the position. See that the position is maintained. Does that make sense? Yeah. See, it remembers the position. Field gaps. So that's yeah, superconductivity. So, so we've demonstrated two things: the Meissner effect, which is you know rejection of all lines. So when you let it cross TC with no lines through it, it remembers that state and it keeps that state. So when you try to push a magnet near it, when it is superconducting, it will preserve that state of no magnetic lines by pushing away the magnet. And that's how maglev trains and all that work. Yeah. The other effect is flux locking, which is if you already had flux lines flowing through it, and then you let it pass through TC, it's going to remember those flux lines, and it's going to keep those flux lines, and that's what's happening now. So if I grab that, as long as it's superconducting, I don't want it to splash. Wait for it to warm up, and it'll drop. There you go. See? So now it's so now it's past TC with no flux line. So now it rejects. See that? So Does that make sense? So that's the Meissner effect right now. It's actually the same thing if you think about it. Meissner effect effect is is the same thing as flux flux locking. So let's try that again. So I have a. So now it's above TC. I'm going to lock it by bringing it close, and then I'm going to let it go past TC. It's sort of poorly locked this time. Poor effort. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, I'm going to let that let that warm up. Now, cross TC, now I'm going to lock it. And this time it's closer. So do you see there's actually a gap in between? It's not, not actually touching. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's not actually touching. Let's shake my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, nothing. Unless the whole thing, because <laughs> it, it disintegrates before it even reaches anything. Yeah. So that's the way to get rid of this stuff, just pull on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Unless you have too much of it and you're in a confined space. Because in that case, what will happen? If you're in a small room and it's confined, and you just pour it on the ground, what will happen? It will come back to it. Yes. Yeah. So not really. Go yeah, it sort of sort of go around, right? And then the concentration of nitrogen will be too high in your room. Does that make yeah. sense? This small amount is safe. Yeah, so even if all that evaporates into this room, it's not going to materially affect the ratio of... By the way, does anyone know the ratio of nitrogen in air? It's only so even air. Yeah, it's only percent. So obviously if it gets significantly higher than that, then you guys are going to lose consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's fine. Um, it's only happened once in history, and that was a really, really confined basement. And this guy uh, poured probably ten times that amount <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, eh? Yeah. It's probably did it on purpose, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs>